Hi everyone, and welcome to episode 150 of Saranova Crafts. I'm your host, Jessica. I can be found as Saranova on Ravelry and Twitter, and as Saranova, Cra Saranova Crafts on Instagram. Um, I might actually write show notes because I have a couple of patterns I'm going to talk about. Um, you can find those on my blog on the Ravelry group. Links down below on YouTube. Um, going to be a quick episode for today because I'm recording before I need to go to work, but I am recording two weeks in a row, so hopefully I'm back in business. Um, there is going to be a week in October that I'm not going to be able to record on a Thursday morning, but other than that, it should be good. Um, Kevin and I are planning to go to the Renaissance Fair this weekend, so I might talk about that a little bit next week. Um, and a very good friend's birthday party is tomorrow as well. Um, but uh, I've had a bit of a week. I've been working on some stuff. I've actually been knitting. I have progress. I don't have progress on two things I showed you last week, but I'm going to show you the project in Potentia from last week and then another project that I hadn't even thought about, but then I've now started, which I probably shouldn't have done. I also frogged two projects. Um, so I'm going to talk about that real quick first. I just got to keep an eye on the time. Um, so what I frogged is, is that if you've been following my podcast from the beginning, you've probably seen on occasion, sorry, this cat hair on my face. You've probably seen on occasion, at least at the very beginning, a shawl I affectionately nicknamed the Shawl of Doom. I started this in January of 2013. This past week, so like with the new year, with the Jewish new year and all that stuff, I was got thinking about stuff that a new year makes you think about. And... I realized, am I ever going to finish this? And if I finish it, am I going to use it? And the answer to both of those questions was no. Because here's the thing, when I first started that shawl, I was still very new to knitting in terms of how long I'd been actively knitting as an adult. I learned to knit when I was a child, but I didn't do it for many years and then I picked it back up again in college. So this was very shortly after I'd picked it back up. I hadn't done anything terribly complicated yet. Um, I hadn't even started this podcast yet, and I didn't know most of my knitting friends yet, and I decided I'm going to do a lace weight Estonian shawl. I'm Looking back, I made a horrible yarn choice for the pattern. The yarn I chose was, um, was fuzzy, which in an Estonian lace, which has worked on that style of lace, is worked on both right side and wrong side rows. So if you have a slightly fuzzy yarn, you're going to lose all of the detail. So, as much as some of my older followers would have, would have loved to see it completed, as much as I would have loved to see this shawl completed, because I love the pattern and someday I am going to knit it, but the shawl of doom hit the frog pond this week. I just, I had to admit to myself, am I ever going to finish this? Am I ever going to actually use it if I finish it? Do I even want to knit on this? And the answer it, to all of those questions was no. I'd made some, I made some not good yarn choices. My gauge was off horribly. I decided to do a variation of the pattern. Uh, the yarn was too fuzzy and it would often like snag and get tangled. I was doing it in alpaca, which really you need like a really smooth merino to do like what I wanted. To. I really shouldn't have chosen alpaca as the fiber content. I mean, I just made realizing and looking at, at it objectively, I had made so many mistakes on this project that I was just like, I'm done, I'm done, I can't, right? So I just, I frogged it. The, the outer lace, the outer border lace was actually knit in one long strip. So I actually saved that. Um, I ripped it back to just that strip. So I pulled out all the inner border I'd worked, ripped it back, and then I bound off that one, those like 16 stitches, because the border was only 16 stitches wide. And I'm just gonna keep it as like a fashion scarf or like a, I can use it as a garland in a room upstairs or something because it's actually like six feet long. I keep getting cat hair in my face. I am so sorry I keep touching my face. I know it's not good for video, but I have cat hair in my eye. Anyways, <laughs> um, so I just, I realized I was never ever going to finish that shawl. And so once I admitted it, I, once I admitted that to myself, I was able to frog it. I also frogged a sweater I'd started um, back in 2016 when I did winter camp. If people who've been following me for a while remember that. Um, I realized I'd completely, I'd printed out a physical copy of the pattern because I flop between using digital and physical copies of patterns for when I'm knitting. Um, I'd lost the physical copy I'd written all my notes on, so I had no idea where in the four charts I was juggling I was. I had no idea what size I was doing anymore. I had no idea of like all this stuff to do with the pattern. 
and I realized um, that th it was too complicated for me to, Zoe, Zoe, she's like behind the camera. She got up on the tray table, the camera's on. Zoe, don't rub on the camera. Yes, I'm looking at you, I'm talking to you, yes. Zoe, fine, if you're gonna do that, you're gonna say hi to the people on the internet. Here's the Zoe, here's the floofy girl. She isn't she pretty? Isn't she pretty? She's a pretty girl. Who's a good Zoe? See, now I'm gonna hold you for a minute. Now I'm gonna make you suffer. Because you jiggled my camera, so now you have to suffer. Yeah, you have to suffer some loves. You have to suffer loves. Okay, you can go. And she goes right back on the tray table. Of course she does. Cat, okay, down. Go on, get down. Good girl. Anyways, I frogged the sweater. I, I do still want, again, this is another thing where I do still want to, to make the thing, but I need to not lose my physical copy of the pattern. So anyways, it was the Stonecutter cardigan. It is a Brooklyn Tweed pattern. It's a gorgeous cabled pullover. And I want it but I think I'm gonna need to make a different size than what I was originally knitting because I was having some questions about the size and I've put on weight since then. And B, uh, I didn't know where I was and I could use the yarn for something else and I would probably get a different yarn as well for that. So again, bad, not great yarn choice, didn't know where I was in the pattern. So, so those, those two big projects at the Frog Pond. So the only old whips I have now are a crochet afghan which i have a slew of karen one pound i'm gonna i'm using for um i actually have it right here hold on i can reach it give me a sec so this is stashaholic's brain dead afghan i have a printout of the pattern this is a free pattern on ravelry on it by the way and this is crochet um so i'm not giving anything away by showing you this it is stashaholic's brain dead afghan and it is a brain dead afghan. You, you literally repeat one row, ad infinitum. I think a cat has been sleeping in this basket, dang it. <laughs> Excuse me, all the fur, all the fur, so much fur. But anyways, this is what it looks like. It's literally repeat the same row over and over and over again. I made it wide enough to fit on a queen size bed, so it's pretty wide. It's like eight feet, I think. It's meant to fit on a queen size bed, meant to fit on a queen size bed, maybe a king. Like have some fall over on the sides. And I have two things of Karen One Pound and Cape Cod Blue. This is the color, Cape Cod Blue. This is it. So I do a crochet on occasion. Um, but this is the big afghan of, I work on it when I'm like sitting here in the love sack or on the couch and I have space to spread out because this is not, this is not car crochet because it's too big. Um, because there's, there's a lot of it. And I've, only, and I've only done, you know, a dozen rows, but it's, I pick at it every now and then I do a row like every other month. But I apologize for the sneezing and the eyes and everything. Allergies, fall is finally here and allergies have hit me like a truck. Anyways, that's Sasha Hollow Spring. And Afghan, you can find it on Ravelry, you can find it in my projects. So that's the oldest non-scrap whip I now have. At least I'm pretty sure it is. I don't have my phone within reach. But anyways, um, and then I have two other scrap projects that are on the older side, but that's it. Actually, I think one of the scrap projects is now my oldest whip in Ravelry. But, um, but yeah, so sorry, I'm just adjusting the camera a little bit because the cat knocked it. And now I'm just noticing that it's mildly out of sync. So, yeah, two big projects I'd had on the, on the needles for ages and ages at the Frog Pond this week because I finally had to admit my, to myself... A, am I ever gonna finish these? B, am I ever gonna wear them? C, do I even know where I am in the pattern? And if the answer to two of those at least was no, it hit the frog one. So anyways, now on to active whips. I have no foes this week, but now on to active whips. So for active whips, I will now give you a whip in potentia from last week. So that is the, oh, I don't have the pattern. The pattern's on the couch. Barley Light, I showed it last week. And I'm using this yarn from Fiberstash Dye Works, and it is Unicorns in Space on her Twinkle Toe Sock Base. Um, it's very nice yarn. I balled it up. This is what it looks like balled up. It's very pretty. Um, I'm gonna get, one of my friends is really good at winding, one of my Canadian knitting friends is really good at winding like perfectly round balls. You can see this is not perfectly round. I'm not good at this. And so we're gonna be in the same, we're gonna be staying at the same 
group of cabins at Rhinebeck, so I'm like, please teach me how to do this. And she said yes. So yay, I get to learn how to wind perfectly round bobbins. Not bobbins, balls. Perfectly round balls. Anyways, um, so this is how it's knit up. Um, if you follow me on Instagram, you already saw the picture of the brim. And then I'm on to the body of the hat. So you have this section, you have this section of garter, and then you have stockinette around the rest of the hat. So I'm getting some interesting pooling because of the way the yarn is dyed. So it's, I'm getting some pooling, but I don't mind. Pooling's fun, especially with something like this where it doesn't really matter. Um, so you have the garter stitch and the stocking net. So it's interesting to see how the yarn changes and how the pooling is affected in each section. Um, I'm knitting these on a US 4 because it is a light fingering. Normally my standard practice is to go up at least one needle size because of my tension. My personal gauge is very tight. But um, after talking with another knitting friend who knows the dyer, and knows what this is like knit up, I decided to stay with the needle size that the pattern said, which is a US 2 for the brim and a US 4 for the body. I'm giving nothing away. This is a free pattern. Um, and I'm making the largest size. So there we go. So it should fit my head. So there we go. Um, so that's that. And then I'm hoping to finish that by Rhinebeck, which I should hopefully, I was trying to finish it for today, but I need to knit eight inches and I didn't quite knit eight inches. So, um, and then this is the project I started and you guys, nobody knew about. So this is the, let me get the front page of the pattern. I printed this one out and I highlighted. Uh, let me get to the front page of the pattern so I can show you what this looks like. Persistence is key. So here it is, it's a sweater. Um, and it has a big cable down the back, but that's what the front looks like. It's got two cables on the front, it's got a big collar. And it is by Amanda Woger trying to show you this right so that's her information I'm not going to show you the pattern pattern because you know but I think there's a picture of the back in here again because I do not have my phone with me so I can't pull it up and show it to the camera ah here it is here it is I'm gonna use my hand to cover some of this so I don't want to give away the pattern because it's a paid pattern so here it is persistence is key and uh, that's what it looks like so that's the back um, so if, again, if you follow me on Instagram, you would have known my adventure with the ba with the back cable already, where I messed it up, had to drop it down and rework it up. I'll put photos here of, so you can see the progress of that. Uh, but it's a top-down sweater. I have finished the first set of shoulder increases. I am on the second set of shoulder increases. And I'm absolutely insane, but I'm trying to find, finish this for Rhinebeck. I know that's crazy bonkers, but here it is. So, here it is. So you can see the collar here. And I'm using the yarn that I was making this into the stone cutter for this sweater. So I frogged that sweater and cast on this sweater. So here's the collar. It's like a shawl collar that it's going to, you know, fold over. And then here's the back. So here's a good look at that back cable. Yeah, I messed that up first time around. So the shoulder increases, right? And then the front cable. And then you pick up the button band. So here's what it looks like so far. I have the two front cables, the back cable, which is the most impressive part of it and then the collar. So it is top down, so hopefully like once I get past the, the shoulder shaping and the bust shaping, I can just zoom on the rest. Because if, as you can see from the picture, it's mostly stockinette with the back cable and the two front cables. So I'm hoping, fingers crossed, that I might actually be able to, to get it done. So, um, so yeah, but I'm probably crazy for trying to do that for Rhinebeck, but I'm gonna try to do that for Rhinebeck. Making sure I have the right page facing. Um, so that's that. And this is in my um, bag from Stitched by Just Lou because I am a Star Trek nerd. So here I have a blueprint of the Enterprise. And yes, I'm showing you the TNG side because I like TNG. So one side is TOS, one side is TNG. I like the Enterprise D better. <laughs> um, whoop. Run away with all of yarn. So yeah, this is like from the frogged sweater where you can see with all the kinks in it, but I'm starting with the fresh balls of yarn first for like the upper part of the sweater. And then as I get down to the bottom where it's like less detail and less shaping, I'll use the, the kinked up yarn from being in the other sweater. But anyways, oh, and so yesterday, and there goes more yarn, I'll pick it up later. So yesterday, this is the last thing I'm gonna talk about and then I'm gonna go because I have to go to work. Um, so yesterday, well, okay, so not, so yesterday I did the sewing, but I picked up fabric on Tuesday because Kevin and I, again, are going to the Ren Fair on Saturday and it's Harry Potter weekend. So I wanted a Harry Potter skirt. Now I have made a skirt out of Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them logo fabric. It's like an orange 
fabric with like a lighter orange logo on it. It's the Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find the logo thing that they use for the movies. Great, I could have, I would have used that. But then I found on sale at Joann's Hufflepuff fabric. So I bought Hufflepuff fabric and I bought plain black felt, which is already covered in cat hair because like we now have three cats, three. Um, one of, one of them isn't ours permanently, but he's going to be with us for like a year. So his name's Nibbler. He's a big floofy boy. But anyways, so I decided I was going to sew two skirts to wear to the fair. Now, these are not good skirts. These are done completely without a pattern. These are done, um, I'm put pictures up on some side of, you know, me wearing the stuff. So I, but I also did pockets. So like traditional, traditionally in like medieval and renaissance times, the side seam of the skirt wouldn't be sewn all the way up and that you would have this pocket you would reach through underneath and it ties on with a drawstring. So that's what I did. I made two pockets, one for each side. And then, um, cause I bought like remnant fabric at Joann's and I just made it, this is like 50, 50 cotton polyester. It's not the greatest stuff, but Keep in mind, I did this all without a pattern. I did this all at the spur of the moment last night in probably an hour and a half. I did all four things, the two pockets and the two skirts. So two skirts, um, two pockets here. And these just tie on one on each hip. And then um, and then I did the, the Hufflepuff skirt, which again ties with drawstrings at the waist because the side seam is open see because there's the back of the fabric the side seams open so that you can get at the um so you can get at the pockets underneath but yet yeah, puff puff crest fabric i am very happy um this is gonna be wrinkled to high heaven for saturday but i don't care and then and this is also very thin this is very thin fabric and it is cotton but it's a it's a thin cotton so like you know i wanted something to go under this both for warmth because it's supposed to be a cooler day and because again this is very very thin um so i bought cheap black felt that was two dollars a yard i made another skirt again that ties on just with one drawstring and one open seam just so i can slip it on um and then this is the skirt so i winged two skirts and two pockets last night <laughs> Uh, so that was that was my crafting this week. So yeah, not not just knitting. Um, oh, and I went to Primark and I got this Team Hufflepuff sweatshirt and I love it. It's amazing. And it was only fourteen dollars, so I'm happy. And it's got a little badger up here, a little gold badger. And then on the bottom, in the corner, I have to like twist it around for you to see. I'm wearing a shirt. I'm wearing a shirt underneath, so like it's fine. Um, it says property of Hogwarts School of Witchcraft and Wizardry. And I'm just like, yay! I am a nerd, and I am like the nerdiest nerd. Not quite the nerdiest nerd who has ever nerded but when oh, it's already coming apart at the, uh, the pulls from the cat and the thing but yes it says team hufflepuff and it's supposed to be like a super wide like the shoulder seam is not at the shoulder sweater so there you go i am happy i love it um it was actually fun going to primark i also got a hufflepuff throw pillow in hufflepuff socks because i'm that kind of nerd anyways that is all for me i need to get going and go to work and change my sweater because this is not a work appropriate sweater um but Yes, so um, I have a Discord. Feel free to join me there. Links down below on YouTube, in the Ravelry group, all that jazz. Um, I should put up links to the patterns. Hopefully I get that up. Um, like, subscribes, comments are all appreciated, but you don't have to give them to me. But I love getting them. It's great to, to hear from you guys and talk to you guys. I was bad about responding to comments on the last video, but I will get to them, I promise, people. I'm sorry. Um, but yeah, I think that's everything. So have a good week, and I'll see you next time. Bye!